Hey everyone, today I'm going to be doing a walkthrough on the 2020 Hobie Mirage Pro Angler 14 360. Bit of a mouthful, but I'm gonna go over the features of this kayak and, and tell you why I think it's an awesome fishing platform. This year I have partnered with Faux Marine to run this kayak as well as the 2020 Hobie Mirage out back behind me there. And uh, they are great people, they've been selling Hobie kayaks for 30 years, they're extremely knowledgeable. If you're in the market, check them out at faumarine.com. This kayak is 13 feet, eight inches long, and 38 inches wide, which makes it super stable. And I feel completely comfortable fishing while standing, which is something I love to do, especially when I'm targeting bass. As such a big kayak, there is tons of storage on board, and as well, a large weight capacity of 600 pounds, which includes angler and gear. As seen here with the seat and drive, the kayak weighs just under 150. Pounds. So I'm going to jump straight to what sets this kayak apart from everything else on the market currently. Um, now this is a pedal drive kayak and so what that means is that you're using your feet to propel the kayak. Um, the reason I love this is because it means my hands are free and I can spend more time fishing as opposed to having to deal with a paddle. Um, now Hobie has created the Mirage Drive which has evolved quite a bit over the years. And this is how it works here. So you're pedaling back and forth and it's gonna propel the kayak forward. Um, so, you know, the, the Mirage Drive started off with a forward propulsion, then the addition of the 180, which included a reverse function, to now the Mirage Drive 360, which enables you to propel the kayak in any direction. This system is incredible as it enables me to position my kayak in any direction, making it super maneuverable. I can easily position myself quickly around structure that I want to fish, making my time on the water much more efficient. For example, I'm fishing around a dock, I'm able to fish it thoroughly without worrying about drifting into it or drifting past it. I can keep my position. Uh, the same goes for fishing in wind or current. I can keep the boat pointed the direction I want and I can also control my speed as well. Steering is very simple on this kayak. On the left side, just above the rudder, there's a handle for the 360 drive. And if you're looking at the drive itself, there is a big red arrow um, that indicates the direction that the fins are pointed. Additionally, you can adjust the pedals based on your height. There are eight settings. You just simply pull up on the button and slide it into the setting that works best for you. Another feature I love about the 360 drive is the kick up turbo fins. Now, if I'm going along in shallow water and I happen to bump into a rock or a log, the fins are going to kick up and just by continuing to pedal, they're gonna drop back down into place so you can continue along. All right, so I'm just gonna throw this in the back end of the way here. And now I'm gonna go over all the features from front to back of the kayak, starting with the large integrated carrying handle up front here. Um, this is really handy when I'm loading and unloading my kayak onto my Malone trailer. Additionally, I also picked up one of the heavy duty Hobie carts. And when I'm pulling the kayak to and from the water, um, just a nice big handle there. It's not digging into the hands. As I mentioned, there's tons of storage on board, um, starting with a large compartment up front here. Um, and this is held closed with bungees. And uh, just opens up here. Um, one thing to mention, there is an adjustable strap on there. So when you're climbing up to grab something out, you can tighten that up so it's not just gonna flop open on you where you can't reach it. So that's nice. Um, there's a removable liner here. Um, I keep a ton of gear, um, my safety equipment, tackle, and other equipment up front here. So it's nice having that huge amount of storage. Um, there is a double seal on the front hatch here. So you've got a seal on the lid as well as on the opening. So when uh, it's raining or, you know, if I happen to take a wave over the bow, it's gonna keep my stuff dry. All right, so moving on into the cockpit area. Um, if you have a bimini or sail accessory, um, there's actually a plug in here so you can easily add that to the kayak. Um, there's lots of cool features here in the cockpit area. 
Starting with mounting boards with integrated tracks, there is one on each side of the kayak. And what makes me happy about this is that I can add accessories without having to drill holes in my kayak. Um, there are also spots in there for tools as well. There is integrated horizontal rod storage for up to six rods up front, and these tubes run up into the bow. Uh, what I love here is that I like to bring a lot of gear and a lot of rods, so I don't have to pick and choose so much what I'm bringing with me. There is an atrial system running along each side of the cockpit, and this is nice. It's just another option for accessories. Um, I'm gonna be adding a fish finder here. Um, you can also add rod holders and other items. The kayak comes with a pair of rod racks, so if you are using the rod tubes, it's gonna keep the butt ends of your rods organized and secure. And also included with the kayak is a cup holder. There are four pulleys in the cockpit area. On the left side, you've got one that is used to stow and deploy the skeg. You've also got one that controls the kickstand, which is used to adjust the height of the seat. On the right hand side, there's a pulley to stow and deploy the rudder. And finally, there's one that's used to raise and lower the Guardian retractable transducer shield, which I will talk more about later in the video. There are two foam grip pads on the floor here, um, which helps provide extra traction. And I find it nice and comfy when I'm fishing barefoot. In the center here is where the 360 drive plugs in, and it is really easy to insert and remove the drive. In front of the seat, there is a rectangular watertight twist and seal hatch, which includes tackle management trays. Um, there's also a rubber mesh pocket in there. This is nice because sometimes I don't wanna be digging through tackle bags and there's items that I wanna keep quick access to. Um, as for the rubber mesh pockets, there's one on each side of the seat as well. And these are nice because you can just throw items in there quickly and also hooks don't get caught in them. I spend long days on the water, often 10 hours or more, so a comfortable seat is crucial. And I am really impressed with the Vantage seat. Um, so this has the 3D mesh, which makes it nice and breathable, nice and cushiony. You can adjust the bottom and seat back of the chair um, by twisting the armrest as indicated. There's also a tensioner on the back, which is used to adjust the lumbar support. You can adjust the height of the seat by using the kickstand to put it into a high or low position. The rudder steering can be controlled with either hand as there is a steering handle on each side of the seat um, with the 360 steering located on the left side. You can also easily adjust the tension on your rudder using this tension knob here on the left. I will be installing a Garmin fish finder and the nice thing is I'm not gonna have to make any modifications as underneath the seat here, there is a scupper that runs down to the Guardian retractable transducer shield um, so that I can then run my transducer cable up there and there's a little plate. Um, additionally, there are three waterproof through haul fittings so I can use to keep my cables nice and tidy um, when I run them up to my fish finder. Underneath the seat, there's also some additional storage for tackle trays as well as a strap to fasten everything down. The particular fish finder that I'm going to be installing will have side imaging, so I'm definitely going to take advantage of the Guardian retractable transducer shield. Um, this will enable me to keep my transducer safe when I'm beaching my kayak or up in shallow water. Um, the nice thing as well is that when I drop it down, I'm going to be able to have that unobstructed view for side imaging. Behind the seat on either side, there are two built-in flush mount rod holders. This is handy for storing a net or, um, you know, sometimes I have a couple presentations in rotation so I can plan which one I want to grab next and it'll be just right behind me. These rod holders also have little rubber covers so that you can keep them sealed off when they're not in use. The kayak also comes with an extra long two-piece paddle. Um, this comes in handy when launching or beaching the kayak when I have the drive out. Um, there's also a T-handle on there, um, which makes it nice if you got to do some quick strokes there and then there's a little built-in holder back here to keep the paddle in place when you're not using it. There's additional storage space back here. Just let me move this out of the way. So I like to load this area up with tackle bags and tackle trays. Um, it's nice having the bungee here to fasten everything down. 
Um, there's also a twist and seal hatch at the back here, which I haven't used yet, but um, it is nice to have that extra storage. Um, we've got a plate here that you can use to access the rudder controls. And then, you know, as I mentioned, there's a large carrying handle up front. There's an even bigger one at the very back here. This kayak has a skeg, which helps it to track better when traveling in a straight line. Um, and the nice thing is both the skeg and the rudder are retractable. So if you happen to bump into something, they're not gonna get damaged. They're just gonna pop up and then automatically drop back down. At the back here, there are also two rubber skid pads to help the kayak from getting all scratched up when you're loading and unloading it. Well, that is a wrap on my walkthrough of the 2020 Hobie Mirage Pro Angler 14 360. Don't forget to subscribe so you can see me fishing out of this kayak this season. Um, if you have any questions or comments, feel free to leave them below. And uh, thank you so much for watching. I'll see you soon.